Father, we are full of gratitude. Because what should work against us is working for us. What should set us back is setting us up. We well, thank you for your power is at work in us. The Holy Ghost is making us effective. For we have received power from on high. We have received ability. We have received effectiveness, efficiency of the Holy Ghost. Once we touch something, it works well. Once we do something, it works well. We produce results because we are, we are proof producers. We produce results because we are proof producers. We produce. Somebody say, I'm a proof producer. Thank you, Father. And Lord, as we gather around your word today, speak to everyone's heart with acts of God. Lord, people that are hurting and there is a hole, let the oil of God pour right into it and bring healing. Anoint the leaves of clay to deliver in a very practical, in a very relevant way, the message with power to everyone here. We trust you that no one online and on site will be the same again. In Jesus' name we pray. If you're online, welcome to all of you joining online. If you're visiting for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. Kenny, it's nice to see you right in front of me. Welcome. Glory to God. Welcome all of you in church. It's nice to see everyone here and to just be part of God's presence today. Glory to the Lord. If you, if you want to invite your friends to join the service online, you know what to do. Click on the share button and invite them. We're preaching a very powerful message today on overcoming depression and overcoming and uh in the first service i was a bit guarded because i was like oh should i share should i not share but i love to share some time ago i've had i got really depressed but there was a time i got really depressed and it became suicidal and it's only a long time ago. I remember my wife is here. I sent a message on WhatsApp. I said, just in case anything happens, this is who I owe, this is what I have. <laughs> Real life story. I said, just in case anything happens. And someone will have said, Pastor B, what could have happened to you that would have made you that depressed? But that's the thing about depression. People that look good can be extremely depressed. People that you walk with can be extremely depressed. And that's why you just hear about someone that died and you wonder, committed suicide, like, no. I mean, one of my closest friends some years ago, I just got a call. He said, committed suicide. I mean, there were two of them. You know, there was one from secondary school, one from university. And the one from university was the worst one because he was living in New York. And they jumped from like a hundred-story building and jumped off the fence. Jumped off the balcony and killed himself. I'm like, if you want to die, why die with pain? And I remember, I remember I wrote those things and I said, well, just for you to know this water. And, you know, I had some confessions there and, you know, I just write, wrote everything. <laughs> and my wife replied, I said, what was this meant to mean? I said, just for your knowledge. Then she got one of my closest friends and I hope that you have friends in your down times. Someone says, you know, the danger is, is many of you don't have someone that you can call a friend. And she called one of my friends, of course, is, is a pastor and is, you know, we're more friends than pastors because even when we get together, we never remember we have churches. We just like, you know, play and bully each other and that kind of thing. And he came. <clears throat> I'm not even sure if he came or he was out of the country and he flew into the country. And he said, my wife said this and that's why I'm here. Can we talk? Is it just in case you don't know, I booked a room just close to your house. I'll be here for the next two or three days until we can sort this out. He said, that's what I do. And... Um, Looking back, I look back at the things that happened and I look back and like, so why was I depressed? There's something most not about depression. Once you can leave the states, you will look back and see that it wasn't that hard. But that's something very tough to know when you are in that state. 
And, that, and that's why in today's service, I, I don't know what you are. Maybe you're watching online. Maybe, maybe you're so depressed you've even given up on God. I understand because you listen to me. There are, two, there are two ways to be depressed. You can be so depressed you stop praying. You can be so depressed you stop praying. You can be so depressed you stop praying. You can be so depressed you start praying. And, 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 and one of the points is that, you know, should I? I don't know if it's a bad thing about pastoring. Can I say it's a bad thing? No, maybe it's a peculiar thing about pastoring. The, the peculiar thing about pastoring, this is a, maybe one of the downsides of the job, is that all of you, when you have problems at work, in your marriage, everything, you run to church and you run to God. Yes or no? <laughs> when a pastor has problem, what does that problem with? He has problem with church and God. There's no place to run to. And that's why, I, I don't know if you know this, Within the first five years of ministry, 50% of all pastors resign. Because it's tough. And, and I'm saying so to you because, you know, many of you have nice makeup, you look so beautiful. I don't care about why you look. You know, you look wonderful, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the person behind. You, your body is wonderful, but your soul is ugly. Your, your body is so nice. You know, you have this nice Brazilian weave and uh, give me the new hair. Now, there's a new hair I just heard about. Bone straight. Yeah, there's bone straight. There's bone straight hair on your head, but your heart is what? Bone stiff. Your hair is bone straight, but your heart is bone stiff. Your, your heart is crushed. You're like the psalmist that said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And some of you, this is not something you want to talk about at all. Because you feel as if it's to put in a place where you don't want to be. But what I've noticed is this. What you abandon gets worse. Abandonment does not heal. Someone says, time will heal anything. No. Time will heal if you walk on it. And, and why you, you know, the thing about spiritual people always want to think that, no, how can I the Holy Ghost filled and be depressed? No. Did you read the story about Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19? In fact, which of the prophets was not depressed? Is it Moses? Is it Elijah? Is it Jeremiah? Is it Job? Is it Judah? They all sunk at some point into depression. But like David, what am I learning? I'm learning this, that though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, the valley of the shadow of death is the place of depression. And listen, listen to this. Sometimes... The mess. The miracle is in the mess. And if that's how you are, you're in a good place today. You're in a good place. Maybe it's a mind that is, is, is depressing you. You're in a good place today. Because God has a word for you. This month is your month. Maybe as a mother, you look at your children and look at your grandchildren. And you, maybe you struggle with a child that has autism and you're wondering, what did I do to have this? You know, all of you that your life is perfect and nice, this is not your month in church. This, church, this month is for people that are human. People that wonder that, what, did I marry a mistake? Because this was not the kind of marriage I signed up for. What happened to my wife? What happened to my husband? People that are wondering that, everybody has gone ahead of me, why am I here? I'm the Christian. All the unbelievers have gone ahead of me. Why am I here? People that when it's your birthday, each of you to rejoice, you start crying. Because you feel as if this is not what I dreamt of at this age. And the good thing is that I'm not just here to remind you of what's going on. I'm here to tell you what God is in about situation. <laughs> Glory to God. And, that, and that's why I told her, if, if you're online, just, just, just write all of you online. Just say, God wants to speak to me now. Just write, God wants to speak to me now. And that, that's you. And if you need to share this with your friend, you can share it right now or after the service, share the link with them. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 in verse 11. Overcoming depression. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. It's a very short Bible passage, but it leads on, on, on something very powerful. He begins to introduce that the concept that Satan has tricks, schemes, and devices that he uses for attacks. He, 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 Paul, Paul, being that eloquent, anointed speaker, full of relation, began to introduce us to a strong concept here. 
And in 2 Corinthians, he says, lest Satan should get advantage of you. Maybe you don't know what that means. Lest you should not be cheated. <laughs> I don't know if you watched this, if you heard this joke when you were young about a guy that came to Lagos for the first time. And if you, if you, if you don't understand Nigeria, just take the guy came to New York for the first time. And when he came to Lagos for the first time, he was counting houses and he went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And he counted so many because he was blown away by the beauty of the city. And someone noticed him counting. I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm counting houses. He said, huh? You're counting houses? You don't have no counting houses in Lagos. You have to pay for what you counted. And he said, ah, oh, I'm sorry. You. Thank God, I've only counted five. He said, ah, that's simple. Five thousand. And the guy gave him 5000 And he was walking around and eventually met his, his uncle in Lagos and said, Ah, Lagos was stupid. Imagine. The guy said, I mean, I've never counted. I mean, I've counted close to 1000 I told him 500 I just paid 5000 And the uncle looked at him and said, You are really stupid. <laughs> now, why do they pay for counting? See, I'm only saying that your ignorance can make you pay. And you know the thing? You'll be feeling smart. The guy was feeling smart. He thought, you know, the thing is that your emotions are working against you, but you're feeling smart by putting on suits and denying them. Hey, you don't know you're dying on the inside. So the apostle warned us and says, hey, he says, be careful. Lest Satan should take advantage of you. How? For we are not ignorant of what? Of his devices. But where are my three wise men come quickly? Where are the three of them come quickly? One of the things you must know is this. Can you stand over here? One of the things you must know is this. One of the things you must know is this. That man, I, I need a direct shot just focused on them. One of the things you must know is that man, he's a spirit. Come over. I want you to block them out. No, no. I just, just no, no. Don't, don't arrange. I want. I'm going to set. Yeah. You need to move like this. Exactly. Yeah. One of the things you must know is this: man is a spirit. But when you look closely, man is just not a spirit. You have to look closely. Man has what a soul. And man lives in a body. When we talk about spiritual attacks, most of the time we're talking about spiritual attacks on the spirit. But the truth is this. Let's really tell the truth. Most of the time when, a child, when someone is born again, your spirit is perfect and no attack can come to your spirit because your spirit is in the image of Christ. But another attack we're familiar with is the attack on the body. And the attack on the body will manifest in sickness. But what we hardly talk about is the attack on the soul. And the soul is the center of the, of, the, of the mind, of the thoughts, of the emotions, and the feelings. And sometimes, and, and the danger is this. Now, stand next to him. Come over here. Come over, stand next to him. The danger, hold hands now. Three of you hold hands. The danger, the problem with the attack on the soul is that is the soul that connects the spirit to the body. So when this is attacked, it can disconnect everything. And so, you see some people have health problem. It's not spirit. It's a soul problem. After the first service, I don't know if you're here, lady. If you're here, just fine. The lady was telling you, are you here? After there was a lady in the first service that wanted to share a story. You know, where is she? Maybe she, she said if she could wait. She said, Pastor, what is about depression? So powerful. I said, why? He said, my father was depressed. We went to the hospital. They said, he has stage four cancer. He said, we went to do cancer tests. They said, there's no cancer in his body. He said, we went back again. He said, he said they had cancer that they could not dictate. He said, but eventually died from it. The reason why is that was the soul because the soul is connected to the is connected to the body. And even when Satan wants to attack the spirit and the spirit is perfect, he messes with the soul and it connects it here. No wonder the Bible says in 2 Corinthians, let's look at that quickly. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 35. Let, let's look at this quickly. He says, let us not be, let, don't let us not be aware, ignorant of the device of the enemy. Second, chapter 10, second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. Are, are you here, somebody? He said, don't we walk in the flesh? Look at what it says. He says, we do not war after the flesh. Continue now. Yeah, let's go. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty true God to the pulling down of stronghold. Continue now. Continue now. He said, casting down what? 
Question, where is imagination? In the body, in the mind, or in the spirit? It says, it, you know what it's saying? It said that this place is a center of spiritual warfare. He said the soul is the So, when there is a demonic attack, the major attack comes from the soul. He says, cast it now. Because imaginations are not in the body. The body is a body. He says, imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring in thought, thoughts and mindsets are in the soul. And that's why if you attend this church, you will hear me teach a lot about how you think and what you say. And I focus on that area because I know that predominantly, you know, should I, should I tell you the truth? When I see ladies or guys that are not married and I want to get married and they are delayed, you know what I ask them? First thing I ask them, why are you not married? Because if they are honest with you, they will tell you the reason why. And the reason why is always a mindset that has grown into a tree. What is a stronghold? Is a mindset that grows. Is a thought that grows and begins to have a hold on you. It has a hold. You can't go anywhere again. The thought has a hold on you. So when you say that all the good ones are taken, what happens? All the good ones will be taken. When you say that all the people I meet are useless people, then all the people you meet are useless people. If you say, I cannot make money in Nigeria, then you cannot make money what? In Nigeria. See, let me tell you, church will not have to talk it, but that's what we think. You know, that's the thing. There's talking and doing. Let me tell you something. Knowledge is not powerful. It's action or that is powerful. <laughs> knowledge is not power. Don't be deceived. It's because it's not what you know that changes you. It's acting on what you know that produces results. So church people know a lot, but they never act on it. Praise God. Thank you. Yeah. Glory to God. So we always talk about attacks. We always talk about attacks on the spirit and on the body. But can we talk about attack on the soul? And the soul will, it will, it will mean attacks that will affect your thought lives. That will affect your emotions. That will affect your feelings. You know, when I wrote that to my wife and I said that, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just letting you know. I did not realize at that point I was under attack. And today I'm going to show you a story in the Bible of someone that was under an attack. Anointed. And that attack ended his ministry. Unfortunately, First Kings, First Kings, chapter nineteen. Somebody say Hallelujah. First Kings, chapter nineteen. So I'm going to focus this on depression. What is depression? Maybe before I read that, let's do that. Job chapter nineteen, verse two, quickly. Psalms forty-two, verse six. Job chapter nineteen, verse two. Job chapter 19, verse 2. Oh, wow. See what it says. He says, how long will you vex my soul and break it? He says, says, my soul is vexed. That's how some of us feel. You feel frustrated within. You feel this long state of unhappiness. Psalm 42, verse 6. Psalm 42, verse 6. This is powerful. The writer of the psalm says, Oh my God, my soul is cast down. Did you see something? It says, my soul is cast down. Question. Everybody, listen to me. When you are tired of pursuing the contract, what changed? Your soul is cast down. Depression is not, not, repression is not feeling down. That's not what depression is. You know, because now this generation, I'm depressed. People don't even know what depression is. 
the pressure is not feeling down. The pressure is not feeling low. The depression is not feeling upset, unhappy, or sad. That's not what depression is. Those can happen when you're depressed. But that's not, that temporary feeling is not depression. Depression is not a character flow. It, you know, someone says I'm depressed, I say man up. It's not something you can man up. You need to get help. The same way human bodies have sicknesses, soul has sickness also. When someone has malaria, do you say man up? You say go for treatment. When someone is depressed, the soul is sick. He needs help. That's why when you see properly depressed people, they malfunction. Like, you, know what I'm you will just see them angry with everybody. Because the soul is sick. When people are depressed, you see them malfunction. They, they are the shadow of who you used to know. Some of you happen, some of you are married with people. I say, what happened to my husband? The truth is this, honey, your husband is depressed. And that's why over the last two years, and that's not what he did for one week, one month, he's just different because he's a different kind of person. The depression has taken his toll. So I'm asking what happened to my wife. Your wife is depressed. What happened to my friend? Your friend is depressed. Have you not seen people that all of a sudden they become the chairman of the bar and drunkard association? And he was someone that was doing very well in his career before. And he was doing so well, but he lost his job. Then he, slid, he went backwards. Then he just began to lay along with low-life people. And you know what happened to him? Because he couldn't face the things that went wrong. He looked for a place of comfort that gave him authority. Where all these guys are low-life people. You know, I'm now, I'm the most educated, the richest of the poorest. You know, the richest of the poorest. And he becomes a captain of drunkards. And you're like, why are you doing that? He cannot respond because he's depressed. Who knows what I'm talking about? Oh, talk to him. Who knows what I'm talking about? Uh, how, how many, oh, can we go deeper? Can we talk today? How, how many of you smoke weed before you're depressed? Because you're depressed. <laughs> he, he, he knew I was going to get there. <laughs> I, I'm going to get there. How, how many of you, <laughs> what's that cough syrup now? Codeine. You codeine. <laughs> you codeine. You're, you're, you're a scientist. <laughs> you're a scientist. You have all this mixture you use. Because sometimes the way we want to get over depression and emotional issue is to medicate. Medicate means look for something that will give us temporary relief. It relieves you temporarily, but it's still there when you come back to your consciousness. And some of us is sex. And when you can't find someone, you just go to, just go to Tinder. Hello, how much? First Kings, chapter nineteen. And depression is real. You, you will see someone doing well in ministry. They will just sink. And the person will begin to doubt everything God had told them. You know, one of, one of the big stories in the Bible is the story of John. I don't know if you know John. John was the person that told us. John is the first person amongst the prophets that announced that this is the son of God. John chapter 1 verse 29. John looked at Jesus and says, Behold the lamp of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That was what John said. But when John got arrested in prison, and nobody was following him again. And people were scattered and forgotten. John, John was expecting Jesus Christ to do something. Jesus Christ did not do something. And John said, go and ask him. Are you the one we should ask for? Or should we expect someone else? Jesus did not even dignify John with an answer. He said, go and tell John. The blind see. The lame walk. He said, go and tell John. He said, and as they went, he said, blessed is him in whom the son of man will not be offended. What he was saying was this. He now asked, he said, John, when you went with that, what did you go and see? He said, what did you go and see? The reason why is that when you are depressed, there are things you should have in time of strength that strengthens you in your depressed season. Well, we're coming there this month. 
What did you go and see? When I wrote that note, I told my wife that just in case. I just remembered all the times I should have died. And God told me, so I kept you alive for this time to kill you. He said, I kept you alive for a purpose. Listen, some of you have had terrible sicknesses, terrible accidents, near death situations. I went to a secondary school that was how I survived healthy in my secondary school. I do not understand. You don't understand. I, sometimes it's so bad, there's water with it all. I drink it. There's parogyra and water, green things, parogyra. You, you, you blow this parogyra away, take the water, put it inside Gary and drink it. I said, that could not kill me. This will not kill me. People drank less than what they drank and died. You are alive for a purpose. I may tap your neighbor. Tap. You need to tap your neighbor. Tap your neighbor and say, you are alive for a purpose. Don't give up on yourself yet. All of you online, write it in the comment section. I'm alive for a purpose. I refuse to give up on myself now. Glory to God. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah is weak. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. First Kings chapter 19. That's what we're going to. Oh, glory to God. First Kings chapter 19. I remember that I was trying to buy this car from... Oh, I didn't want to tell you stories. And the car was a hundred and twenty thousand naira, and how another thousand naira. And it was a friend; it was a younger friend that owned the car. I begged heaven and earth for him to reduce the money. He didn't, and I couldn't buy the car. And I felt, gosh, I can't even find twenty thousand naira. Meanwhile, I had friends that were driving brand new car. I was trying to buy a fourth-hand car. Sometimes you calculate your future based on the meaningless past. Don't make the mistake. You must know that most times your future and your past are not connected. Your future is based on the decisions you make now. But unfortunately, a lot of people live from the past. What does it for the past mean? Why not doing businesses? Because I lost a lot of money. And it, so they're living from a past pain. They're living from a past position. They're living from what happened in the past. Listen to me. If you live in the past, you will return to the past. First Kings chapter 19. Let me look at him and say, hey, I'm warning you now. Oh, let me tap. Look into your neighbor's eyes. He can't bite. Say, I'm warning you now. Don't live in the past. The past is gone. Do you know there are mistakes I've made, like legitimate mistakes I make that I cannot fix? What can I do? It's gone. Why worry about something I can't change? Oh, I got pregnant as I went look. What can you don't have a child? That's gone. Oh, I destroyed my best relationship. Okay, that's gone. I was careless, I lost my job. Okay, that's gone. Where are you right now? Didn't you read Isaiah? He says, Remember not the former things. He said, Consider not the things of old. He said, Because I do what? A new thing. Isaiah chapter 9, 1 uh, Kings chapter 19. That's what we're going to, right? Oh, is this blessing you? Verse 1. And, and just for you to know, right now, WHO released a statistic and you can check it online. Depression is the number two killer disease in the world. What about kills people the most? Depression is number two. And they say by 2030, depression will be number one. And guess what has shocked me? A depressed person is at a stronger risk for heart disease and mental sickness than someone that smokes. Depression. So, why you see all this degree that says that smoking kills? They should put depression kills first, smoking kills second. 
And the thing with depression is that depressed people can look good and be very depressed. And you know the thing? The more depressed you are, the more you never know you are depressed. Because it becomes a place you live. Initially, you know something is wrong, something is wrong, something is wrong. Then after some time, nothing is wrong again because that's where I live. Someone say hallelujah. First Kings chapter 19. And he had taught Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Uh, next week is going to be powerful. Oh, next week we're going to see what is the cost in this. He says, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah and said, so the gods do to me and more also, if I make not your life as one of them by tomorrow about this time. <laughs> see, she only sent a message. Do you know in the Bible, there's no record that Jezebel did anything? Oh, come on. I, I can hear you. Do you know in the Bible, there's no record that Jezebel did anything? She only posted on Instagram. That was all. She only sent a DM. Look at the next verse 3. Then you will expect Elijah. Maybe you don't know where Elijah is. But Elijah was one of the most prolific prophets of the Old Testament. And what did Elijah say? So the Bible says in verse 3, <laughs> the Bible says, and when he saw that, the Bible says, he went for his life and came to Bathsheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. And he went a day's journey to the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he may die. He was not just depressed, he had now gone to the suicidal point. What are some things you want to learn about depression? First of all, when you're depressed, one of the things that happen, you will lose your self-esteem. Because I thought, knowing Elijah, you know, if, if I was there, Elijah, and Jezebel said that, Allah said, Allah was smart saying, prophet Elijah, do it again. Uh, you are the one that caused that fire from heaven. But in a second, Elijah forgot himself. Question, you've forgotten who you are. You've forgotten. You, you've forgotten who you are. That you are a risk taker. You, you, are, you are a giant slayer. You are a child of God. You are a child of promise. You've forgotten who you are. What happened to you? That's why God told them. He said, he asked Eve. He said, who told you? He said, who told you? He said, what did they tell you? Because you lost 10 million, you think you're a failure. Who told you? You've forgotten your princess and the queen in the house of the Lord. Just because of that guy's breakup. You say, my life is over. Just a guy broke up, your life is over? Just because you lost 20 million. 20 million is a lot of money. But you're more than that. If I, for you to lose it, it's below you. Praise God. The second thing that happens is this, which is very powerful. The second thing that happens is this. He says, low self -esteem. The second thing, you could signs the part of it. You could feel the helplessness. The, the, the helplessness. I, I don't know why Elijah forgot about God. Because when people are in depression, they are in a flight mode. They want to run. Question, what are you running from? Many of you want to migrate. You are not going anywhere. You are only running away from what's that will catch you there. Because the tendency is that when there's a problem, you want to run away. When there's a problem, you want to run away. How, when you get to where there's a problem, where will you run to again? You keep running. The Bible says the righteous, the Bible says the wicked run it when no man pursueth him. You're yeah, running. When will you stand and say, hey, Goliath, I'm not running again. And these are symptoms of depression. Number one, you see the low surface. And number two, you see the helplessness. Number three, you see the anxiety. You know what anxiety, people call anxiety or panic attacks, is when your fear creates realities that your body begins to respond to. Nothing has happened though. But you begin to be so afraid of what has not happened. Who knows what I'm talking about? Who has been to a depression and you would love to share a story here? I will let, let's learn from a story here today. You know, let's hear from a story here. How it impacted you. How it, Anybody here, just raise up your right hand. I would, I would love to hear your whole story today. Okay. There's someone in front, up front here. Yeah. 
Good morning, church. Good morning. Okay, so I was, I'm going to share my story of when I was depressed in 2017. Yep. Thereabouts. 20, yeah, 2017, thereabouts. So it happened when I've not entered school, university at that time. Um, I graduated 2015 from secondary school, and, you know, because of my results, WAEG, I tell people that I failed. I got F9 in math, so I said I had to write again in 26, 2016. So 2016, I did not still pass again. I wrote in echo, but I didn't still pass again. So, so what made to, you depressed? So what made me depressed is the fact that I had not entered school, and I was still failing at Hold on. My exam. What made you depressed that you didn't school? What did entrance school mean to you? What did not entrance school mean to you? I want to show you something. What? Because, I mean, like, my mates were already in school. That's what I'm going to. At that time. The root of our depression was comparison. Sometimes, it's not what happens to you that matters. It's what the interpretation you give to what happens that matters. You know what I'm saying? So, by the time you enter school and you finish school, your mate that studied medicine that entered school after the first result was still in school. Why didn't they feel they were behind? But they were still in school. Why? Because they would have used seven or eight years in school. So, you'd have done two years extra plus four years, six years, they would have still been in school. Because they felt as if they were in a training. You felt as if you were behind. I want to ask you a question. Everybody look up here. If, if, if you were Joseph's friend, and Joseph told you all the dreams, and the first thing you saw was that they kidnapped him, then he ended up in Potiphar's house as a slave, they, they ended up in the prison, what would they have said? He has generational causes. Is that not true? Sometimes we judge too soon what God is doing with us. You know, because the path is not like how we would take it. The path is different. Thank you. Let me get another person that want to share a story. Another story. Yes, yeah, this brother over here in white. Okay, can you get the microphone quickly to him? Yeah, in white. Okay, morning, church. Good morning. Um, so I didn't really know I was even depressed. Based on your explanation, now I think I was depressed. Yeah. Yeah. Which is true. And, and that's why I'm saying that. Some of you don't even know you passed through it. And that's why you never resolved it. Because you didn't know something was wrong. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I left Coca-Cola in 2020. 21, sorry. I did other two jobs. In 2023, 20, January, the company I moved to shut down. So, I lost my job. Okay. So, January, okay, I had savings. I would get a job. February, I made up operations. What's going on? I should get a job. March, still no job. Hmm. Uh, my wife started to tell me, guy, you are becoming very sensitive. You don't react to things like this before. What's going on? Did you know this? Ad? This is why you must get about depression because the, the thing begins to affect everybody around you. Some of you, you know what? Should I be honest with you? Some of you learned depression from your parents. Hmm. Hmm. Because some people, especially single parents, Single parents most times are depressed. And they over time pass that depression to their child. And their child does not know what to be. See, wait, sometimes when you go to a single parent's mom, there's always murmuring, complaining, challenges, tears. Once in a while there'll be joy. But joy is not the natural state. And when that child is born in that environment, and some of you will see the child and you're upset with the child because you feel as if it's a tie to something you don't want to remember. Continue, sir. Yeah, so um, in April, it became a bit intense. I think I was becoming more agitated and anxiety crept in. You were addicted. Agitated. Agitated. Yes. So the, anxiety crept in. Anxiety crept in. So, you know, the fear of, wow, my, my savings is going down. What's going to happen? But I thank God I have a great wife who is quite understanding and is quite supportive. Okay. And um, to grant it all, I thank God sometimes end of April, Coca-Cola called me back and asked me to resume in May. So I'll be resuming on Monday. And I thank God for that. So good. So good. So good. I, I want to take one more story. If, you know, some, I want something that's very different. Something that's very different from... I, I've had a story about school, job. What, what is your story about, Tommy? What? Church. Hmm. Okay, let's go. 
Uh, anybody's story about marriage? Yours about marriage? Okay, the lady behind, okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, my story started out, I was in, I was in school, and um, it was about 2021. Um, when I entered school, I grew up in a Christian household. So I grew up with, you know, being active in church. And when I, went, when I got to school, I became committed in a church I don't want to mention. And I was like firebrand, you know, a leader, cell leader, everything. And because of that, I got recognition. And I got recognition in high places in church. And on getting to that high place in church, it was a different ballgame entirely. I found out members who were molested, who were raped in church. I, in fact, working there, I saw how money was being embezzled. And there were even leaders that we had back then who would come to the altar, lay hands, people would fall under the power, and they would go back and go and rape members or sleep with members. And it was really bad because at some point, it literally like affected my... What, what happened to you? Actually, I... You first, stopped going to church? Yes. I, yes, I actually still believed in God, but I just stopped. I How long like, did you stop for? For like a year. How did you, were you praying or you stopped prayer for some time? No, okay. Time? So, when it happened, because I actually like... It wasn't really about church. I actually really love God so much. So, when it happened... I was literally like, I didn't know what to do, but I knew that I couldn't stay in that church to witness what they were doing. Because at some point, when they found out I knew about it, they no, 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 don't worry. I, let's focus on you. You know. Okay. Let's focus. I, I want to tell me how you feel, felt in that. I felt lost. Wow. I felt like everything was a lie, and it was so bad that even when I hear, me, like when I would listen, I didn't want to listen to message. I didn't want to go to church because I felt like everybody was doing the same thing. Wow. Yes, so it just and, 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 and let, let me help you with that quickly, just because of time. One of the things you must ever look up here. One of the things you must learn is this. Never adjust your theology because of a tragedy. Your theology is what you believe about God. Don't let a tragedy change what? Your theology. That's what happened to Job's wife. Job's wife said, curse him and die. Job says, no, I will not allow my tragedy change my theology that God is a great God. This is powerful. You are a legend. Bless you. Thank you, sir. Give it to the, the lady, the lady with the glasses. Praise the Lord, church. Hallelujah. Okay, um, mine was uh, two years ago. Um, while I was in my husband's house, a lot of things happened and I was depressed. I didn't know I was depressed, as he said. So when Are you still some, married or you're separated? No, I'm separated. I'm you're separated. Anymore, okay. So when um, things start happening to me, I do things. If I do some things, I consult people. But um, what happened, I was with church money and someone introduced me to a business and I ventured into business and I lost the money because I didn't talk to anybody. I wanted to make fast I money. I want you to notice this. When people are depressed, they begin to make mistakes that makes their problem worse. Yeah. See, let me give some other information. Number one, I wish you saw it from him. Number one, you lose your self-esteem. And that makes you make bad decisions. Number two, you isolate. If you notice, Elijah just went by himself. You stop picking calls. You're, all, you're not like dark places. You stop replying text messages. You don't want to see your friends. You don't want to talk to anybody. You isolate. Number three, you, you gradually have suicidal thoughts. Number four, then you become very, very unhappy. You were very unhappy, madam, right? You were crying a lot. I cried my eyes out because I was hoping the marriage could work. I was still there because I was hoping to work. Wow. Um, again, sorry, I want to say something. At times, you said um, our looks may not divine what we are really. You may be going through a lot, but people know how to cover their pain with their looks. So I was going to a, a program. I won't call the name. And I was a leader as well. And I climbed the pulpit. I preach. I pray. And a but whole you were lot... dying inside. Sir? But you were dying inside. In silence. I was, I was gone in silence, but See, they didn't let me know tell what you was something. happening. Hold on, lady. When people are depressed, sometimes the body is walking, but the soul is dead. Suicide is not when you not take the drug. You know, in the first service, and I'm going to close with this because of time. Thank you for letting me know the time. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
One lady came up to me after the first service and said, I don't know why I came today. And that's not about depression. When people are really depressed, they will not look for help. If you want to help someone that's depressed, don't say, come to, come to church. You will carry them. You will carry them because they will not come. They feel helpless about the situation. And they said, I don't know why I came this morning, but I've been very suicidal. And I said, wow. And I, I introduced her to you. And guess what? Do you have a microphone? Give her the other microphone. Who does she want to kill along with herself? Who does she want to kill along with herself? What is she? Oh? Her children. No, no, say to the microphone, yeah? Her children. She said, I'm not just suicidal. I want to kill myself and kill my children. When you saw that lady, was there, could you have imagined she had that kind of thought? And, and you know the thing, sometimes when I teach like this, I'm like, oh, something powerful. What is more powerful than changing and saving lives? And let me tell you something. Last scripture, and I, I will close because of time. We just don't have all the time. And that's please prepare yourself towards the, you know, the, the intervention, the last Sunday. Let's do the last scripture. Last scripture as we close. Job chapter 14, verse 7. Job chapter 14, verse 7. And, and, and the thing is, the thing is, is today we're just, in this month you're going to learn, next time you learn what causes it. You're going to learn how to use the power of God, a spiritual strength, to break depression. And if you're in that how to stay stable. So it's, it's not a, see, it's not a one thing. We're going to walk through this together. You must not miss any Sunday this month. See what the Bible says, Job. I thought you were going to put on the screen for me, Job, 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 Job quickly. Job chapter 14 verse 7. Job chapter 14 verse 7. See what it says. He said there's no hope for a tree. Because I know that you feel as if there's no hope for me. He said there's hope for a tree. If it's cut down. I don't know what, 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 what you've expressed loss or pain. He says that it will sprout again. The tender branch therefore will not cease. Verse 8. Though the roots wax old. Oh, my come and bring the water for me. He said though the roots wax old in the earth. And the stalks die in the ground. Look at verse 9. He said, yet. Yet what? Read, read, read. Yet what? At the saints of water, what will happen? Huh? Huh? He says, verse, the verse 7 says, as long as his roots is in the ground. You know why? When you have the miscarriage, it hits you, keep your roots in the ground. When you lose the job, it hits you, keep your roots in the ground. When you, have, when you have a divorce, it hits you, keep your roots in the ground. No, no matter what it happens, so move. Uh, when, when you lost money, keep, keep your roots in the heart. You had the breakup, keep your roots. You had the rape, keep your You had trauma, keep your roots there. He says, as long as your roots is there. The problem is that you are moving helter skelter. Keep your roots in the ground. Oh my God. Help me tell your neighbor, keep your roots in the ground. Even if you have to drag yourself, drag yourself. Then he says something as, as you keep your root there. Look for the environment where there's water. He said, Why? He said, Not too much water. He said, At the saints, just at, at just the saint of water. He said, It will blossom again. You know the thing? You are dying because you don't have water. What is water? The living water is the word of God, it's a person of Jesus. You need to stay in an environment where. And not every Sunday. That's the problem. You, you, you think this is an every Sunday thing. But depression doesn't come every Sunday. It comes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You need to find a place. Get to next level prayer. Every day. Go to YouTube at Harvesters. And get some saints of water. Get what? Some saints of water. Because if you get the saints of water, it will blow some. Let's pray. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Let's pray. Stand on your feet. Everybody give the Lord a big shout of praise.